Hey YouTube, this is uh, me, JD, coming at you with my top 20 uh, running backs. Um, this should be a shortish video. Um, I'm pretty much naming who I think is my favorites and why, and I'm gauging this on how good I think they'll do this year compared to last year. Um, so that's a big part of this. Um, overall production, I got a little bit of fantasy football thought process on this too. Um, I'm not adding any rookies to this list. I'm not adding people who are second stringers, like say the second running backs on the team. I'm adding strictly starters. Um, so if they end up not starting, then I guess they're off the list. I'm going to have to redo this list. But without further ado, number one, in my opinion, is Jamal Charles. He does good. He's been doing it good every year. Um, we finally have a vertical passing threat, so he's just going to get better running the ball because they can't load up the box on him. Um, and they run very well against the loaded box. Him and uh, Davis do very well. And that's probably the best one-two punch running tandem in the league. Um, if I put second uh, you know, second runners on, on, on here, I think he would probably be number two. Miles Davis. So That's my number one, Jamal Charles. If he's available for free to see, I'm picking him up. If he stays healthy, he will have another good year. Um, he was injured early last year, and he got better as the season progressed. Number two, Adrian Peterson. Um, he's had last two years he played has been very good. And then last year he had off, which is actually a blessing because he's going to add another year to his career. So I, I project he'll be very good. That team, I think, went about 8-8 eight and eight, or like 7-9 and nine without him. Imagine what's going to do with him, and now he has a quarterback that can throw. He has um, Teddy Bridgewater, who can throw the football very well, or pretty well. I'm not going to say very well, pretty well, so they won't be able to load the box up on him. And he's he was running against nine, eight-man boxes all the time two years ago, and he would just run people over, and he still got a lot of yards. So that's my number two. Number three is Marshawn Lynch. I don't personally like Marshawn Lynch, but you can't say anything bad about his game. Um, the scheme that they run with the read option really helps him, and you can't bring him down one on one. You have to you have to gang tackle him, and if you space the field out, adding Jaden Graham going to help that help with that. I think he's just going to do just as good this year, if not better. He'll probably lead the league in touchdowns too, or rushing touchdowns, I should say. Um, so he'll have a better, just as good a year, if not better. Number four is Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy has been getting better every year. He does a little better every year. Uh, pay, if um, I think they're gonna they're gonna take a hint from last year, and they're gonna run the ball a little bit more. That way, they avoid getting Aaron Rodgers injured. That's one of the best offensive teams in the league if Eddie Lacy can run the football consistently. And he has the last few years. He just needs to stay healthy, and he can catch the ball in the backfield, which is a big plus. So that's a little fantasy mix in right there. All uh, Jamal Charles is the same way. Lynch is kind of the same way. Number five is Anderson. Anderson. If you don't know, he plays for the um, he plays for the Denver Broncos. They've got a new coach, so I anticipate uh, I anticipate that team being pretty darn good at running the football. C.J. Anderson, because their coach um, has more desire to run the ball than throw. And after last year, when they they learned that they can't put everything on Peyton Manning. He got a little bit, he got injured, I guess he injured his quad or hamstring or whatever. And they tried putting everything on him, they couldn't. So they need to balance it, and I think they're going to balance it a lot better. And this guy came on strong at the end, so I think that will help them. Have him run the ball a little bit more, limit Peyton Manning to 20 carries a game, uh, or 20 throws a game, I'm sorry, 20-25. Give Anderson the ball more, and they still have Monte Bell, they still have Ronnie Hillman, so they have a lot of options, just to say that. Um, number six is Matt Forte. Matt Forte was horribly used last year. I know firsthand because he was on my fantasy football team. He was horribly used last year. This year he has John Fox as his coach. John Fox will run the ball with him a lot more than he did last year. Um, he can catch the ball really well in the backfield. He needs to touch the ball 20 plus times a game. Okay, probably about... 18, 20 rushing, maybe, maybe 30. We'll say 30 times a game. He just produces. There's no other way to put it. And after the horrible way he was misused last year, I think this year's going to be a little different. They're going to use him more. 
They're gonna have um, they're gonna be balanced. Um, Jay Cutler is not. I don't think Jay Cutler is gonna be as bad as he was last year. So number seven is uh, Forsett. Forsett was thrown into the mix whenever uh, Ray Rice got suspended or kicked off the team, whichever one you want to call it. So Forsett stepped in. He was on my fantasy football team. He did very well. I see that happening again. I think they're gonna get a little more run heavy. He, he runs very hard. He runs low. Um, I personally like the way he runs, and he gets the ball in the end zone. That's all the other way to put it. A couple guys, I want to say this, are down the list for in the, there's reasons, and I'll explain that. Number eight is DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray is a top five talent running back, but for the same reason that Dallas decided they didn't need him is the same reason he's eight on my list. He should be ahead. He should be at least number five talent-wise. Last year, he had 450 um, touches. Um, 300, like 90 rushing yard, or rushing attempts, and then another almost 60 um, pass catches for you know, screens or whatever. Um, s- historically speaking, whenever that happens, you you have a, tra- a tail off the next year. Like you don't do as good, um, and that's why the Dallas Cowboys thought they could lowball him on a contract. And Eagles picked him up. They were on a pretty good scheme. Um, it, it worked for uh, Rashawn McCoy. I do think it'll work for uh, Murray. Um, he just has to stay healthy. That's one of his big issues is injury prevalence. But he was healthy most of the last year, and he had almost 2,000 rushing yards. So. Uh, number nine is Mark Ingram. Um, that team is a horrible team in general. But Mark Ingram did pretty good last year, and they're kind of going more towards a run balance, um, especially getting rid of Jimmy Graham now. You have to. Um, Jimmy Graham doesn't really block very well, so I guess that kind of helps the running game. You're going to have another tight end that can block. And Mark Ingram had a good year. He had a couple games where he was injured. Other than that, he had a good year. I think they'll run the ball more. I think he'll catch the ball out of the backfield more. they got to do something to help Drew Brees out. So, uh, number 10 is LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy, like Murray, is a top three, top five talent. The issue is, is I don't trust him going to Buffalo. He is a one-cut, he's a cut-and-go guy, okay? You're about to play in Buffalo where it's cold all the time, it's going to snow all the time, you're not going to have that benefit, not to mention the scheme you had in, in the, on uh, Philadelphia was the perfect scheme for you. I'm not sure they're going to do that scheme for you. So I think he will, he, will, he will still do well. He's a good running back. But I don't think he'll do as good as he would have done if he'd stayed in Philly. Number 11 is... Uh, Foster from um, Houston Texans. Um, Foster is a very good running back. I think he's getting up there in age. That's his first issue. Second, they don't exactly have a quarterback, and they lost Andre Johnson, and they, they don't have a great passing game. So he will run good and hard, but the issue is they don't have a passing game to keep the other team honest. So that is where I have Foster number 11 on my list. He's a good running back. I mean, you could argue that he's going to be great. Um, but he just, he has those, he has those downfalls. The team around him isn't exactly great. You have to take in all facets of this. That's what I'm doing. Alfred Morris, three years in a row, he's had over a thousand rushing yards. Rookie year, sec, or sophomore year, and now his, whatever we'll call it, third year. And now he's on his fourth. He gets better every year. What's going to help him this year is, first off, I think RG3 will be better. They got a, we got a new offensive line coach. Um, Bill Callahan is a great offensive line. We saw, we drafted two very good linemen to help block for him. And he's been running, he runs good and hard regardless. And he's been doing well behind a crappy line. If that line improves, I mean, just like temper, 10 or 15% better, he's going to do a lot better as a runner. And, I mean, this may be a detriment to him as well, but we did draft another running back in uh, Matt Jones, uh, and he can run the ball too. So that might take a little pressure off Morris. And his numbers may decrease a little bit, but he'll still be productive. I think his I think he'll have the same amount of yards, if not more. But he has another. They have another running back they can go to. Uh, number thirteen is uh, George Bell. George Bell has been playing very good the last couple of years. Last year was probably his best year. The reason why that is is because they got a coach that doesn't want um, Matt Stafford to fling the football every play. He's trying to run balanced. He's trying to 
run an actual scheme, uh, a strategy against the team he runs. And George Bell has been a huge product of that. Um, he, they hand the ball off to him. He runs the ball hard. They use play action very good with him. He is a very consistent player. And getting rid of Reggie Bush really helps that because now he's going to get the ball even more. Uh, my friend Chad is obsessed with getting him on fantasy, and I understand why. He plays well. He plays hard. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He does just about everything. Number 14 is a player I'm not too familiar with because I'm not a fan of this team at all. Um, Hill from, I think it's from uh, the Bengals. I think it's Jeremy Hill. Check that. Yeah, Jeremy Hill from the Bengals. Personally, again, I do not like this guy. I don't, I don't like the team. I don't say anything about the guy. I just don't like the team. But I know last year he came on very strong. He put, uh, what's his name's butt on the bench. I'm trying to find it. Make sure you get a uh, Giovanni Bernard, he put him on the bench. And he just, he showed up. He put, he ran hard. He uh, attacks the ground. He, he, on his ground game, he attacks defenders. He doesn't avoid them. He runs over people. I just don't like that team. I, I don't like the coach. You, you're, there, you're somewhere for 12 years and you can't win a playoff game. You should be. You should have been fired. Seriously. If I had that kind of production, if anyone else had that kind of production, they'd be fired. It's that simple. Freaking John Fox gets got the playoffs three years in a row. He gets fired. He got the Super Bowl one of those years. Freaking um, Harbaugh. NFC Championship game three years in a row. Three years. Fourth year, he kind of goes bad because half his defense is out, and he gets fired. Explain that to me. Someone explain that to me. It makes no freaking sense. Number 15 is Jennings um, from, I think it's Rashad Jennings, from New York Giants. New York Giants have been beefing up their offensive line. Um, they still have decent receivers. They still have decent receivers, um, so they can throw the football. They can be balanced. Um, I think he got a little injured, a little banged up last year. He's a hard runner. If they can, if he can stay healthy, that offensive line shows up, they can be a very good football team. But again, it's it's what ifs. It's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of what ifs in the NFC East. Every team's like that. The only one that's kind of not a what if is Dallas, but Dallas is Dallas, and it can screw up at any point. So. Um, I think it's Lamar Miller from the Dolphins. I got another video where I was dissing the Dolphins running game. Apparently he runs very, he had a lot of yards last year. The whole team had a lot of yards. I'm just going off my, my history of knowing that they, some reason they find a way to screw up. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, apparently he runs very hard. He had a lot of rushing yards. That team had a lot of rushing yards. I just don't like the Dolphins. It's not nothing personal. I just don't see them ever being successful. Their coach, it's uh, like what happened with the whole bullying scandal. It's the coaching thing for me. They find a way to screw themselves up. That's all there is to it. Um, number 17. I have to throw them on here just for this sole purpose. Darren McFadden. Because he's, on, he's behind the best offensive line in the NFL. And if you go, if you go off your number, his numbers last year to this year, he could have outstanding numbers compared to like it, it could be astronomically different. Like he could be number one when it comes to improvement from last year. So him and Peterson, Peterson only played one game, but he is behind the best offensive line in the league. And if he stays healthy, he has a chance of being pretty darn good. So that's my argument there with Fadden. Um, he's very injury prone. He can't stay. Uh, healthy, sometimes the best ability is availability. So, no other way to put that. Uh, Frank Gore is my number 18. He, I know he's up there in age, but he still runs hard. He can catch the ball in the backfield, and he's on the ultimate team that does that. Frank, or uh, Alex Smith will get him the ball in the backfield every time he can possibly do it. And Frank Gore's production will be better than it was last year. Last year he had to share carries with Hyde, with um, Hunter, I think that's his name, Hyde and Hunter. But I see Gore being very successful. He did he 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 uh, he'll run the ball hard. They finally have a decent running game. And with Andrew Luck, you can't load up the box. You're gonna have six man box. All you gotta do is get past the first first level of defenders, and you're gonna have 
He's going to have a lot of yards. I don't think people understand that. Because Andrew Luck will pick you apart if you try to stay up on him. There's no way to put that. So, um, number 19 and 18 or 20 are two very good runners, but I have them down here for one reason. They're being suspended the first three games. Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt. Le'Veon Bell was 19 because I think the Steelers have a much better offense. And LeGarrette Blunt won at number 12. Both of these guys could be in the top 10. You know, it just depends on your opinion on how things are, but they're out the first three games. That's the issue I'm having with pick, putting them in the top 10. And it was very tough to put them in the top 20 because they're going to lose three games. Now, the fantasy guy in me says, okay, just don't draft them. Maybe you pick them up to create, or in the, in the, uh, maybe you ha you'll draft a guy, he has good numbers, maybe someone trades him. Um, but I'm not going to touch him. Um, I'm not losing three game or three games in fantasy just to pick up a guy who might come on strong. These three games could be crucial to them in not playing those three games. They start out rusty. It might it, some some running backs give an example like last year McCoy took him like six, about five or six games to get going. Then he started running very very well. These guys might be the same way. I gave Le'Veon Bell a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because he's on one of the best offenses in the league. Both of them are on very good offenses, but um, Le'Veon Bell, he's on a more vertical offense, so he's going to deal with boxes with six, maybe seven at the most. The Garrett Blunt, he's on a team that dinks and dimes, so they can play up on him a little bit. So that's why I have them 19 and 20. It's nothing personal. Both of them are very good runners. I actually like the Garrett Blunt um, more than Bell. I'm not a Steeler fan. But that is my opinion on the top 20. I have four honorable mentions. Carlos Hyde, there's things we've got to see here. Um, if he's the if he's the guy, how good will he be? Um, I, I think it's Isaiah Cromwell. Cleveland just it, right now that's a catastrophe. We'll just see how he does. He did pretty well last year. Him and West. So Latavius Murray from the Oakland Raiders, he came on very strong at the end of last year. Got to see if he can do it again though. And Doug Martin was injured all last year. So obviously he can easily just improve drastically, but you gotta see it. I, mean, I think he tore his ACL or something. Not too many guys come back from that completely prepared to, uh, completely prepared to play, to be 100%, make all the cuts, so on and so forth. So that is my top 20 running backs with four honorable mentions. No rookies on this list. Um, I gotta see him first. So. Obviously, a handful of guys could probably make huge impacts. And again, no second stringer. There's no backups on this list either. I may do a list of uh, 20 best backups or 10 best backups. Those are our some. But that's my list for that. And I'll probably do a wide receiver list here soon. Okay? So, see ya.